We ready? Good morning, River City Church. Morning. How are you? Morning. Whoa, excellent. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. I <laughs> uh, just want to welcome everyone who's here in person, those of you who are watching us streaming. I uh, just want to encourage those that are at home. Uh, I know that there is a surge in the COVID cases. We have new orders from the governor. Um, just want to encourage everyone again that you know, we are being wise, uh, being cautious here at church. I know there was a ladies event yesterday you know, where they had their distancing and wearing their masks and so forth. And we just want to encourage you uh, to come and join us in person. Uh, but if you're uncomfortable, if you uh, want to stay home, you know, we welcome that opportunity for you as well to, to watch us streaming online. Uh, so, you know, when I was uh, preparing for this morning, a couple things to, came to mind. Of course, the first one is, and I was going to sing it a little bit, but then I figured no, I probably shouldn't do that because Pastor will take the mic away from me. Um, but aren't we in the most wonderful time of the year? Yeah. Amen. It's the Christmas season, of course. It's the time of year when we remember from John 3.16, that God so loved the world that he gave you and me a gift of his only son. When we celebrate Christmas, we are celebrating God's love. But Christmas wasn't always celebrated. When Charles Dickens wrote A Christmas Carol, which was amazingly back in 1843. You know, we think of the 1900s, and you think, boy, it sounds like that's 100 years ago. <laughs> this was 200 years ago when he wrote The Christmas Carol. The actual celebration of Christmas was in decline. It was viewed as tied to pagan holidays, Roman, ho Roman and German pagan holidays, and also in the 1840s, it was the beginning of the Industrial Revolution. You didn't know you were going to get a history lesson too, right? And back then, workers didn't even get the day off to celebrate Christmas. Now, I like the 1951 version of the Christmas Carol. It's an Alistair Sims was the actor that played Scrooge. And there's a line in that version, and I think it's actually in the novel itself, where Scrooge, in describing or celebrating Christmas, he says, it's a poor excuse to pick a man's pocket every December 25th. <laughs> now the author, Charles Dickens, and the whole reason he wrote The Christmas Carol was to uh, re-inspire the celebration of Christmas. He wrote about Christmas that it's a good time a kind, forgiving, charitable, pleasant time. The only time I know of in the long calendar of the year when men and women seem by one consent to open their shut up hearts freely. But the Christmas season isn't the most wonderful time of the year just because of the birth of Jesus. Because if the story ended there, we would still be lost, without hope, separated from God by our sin. The Bible doesn't actually tell us to celebrate the birth of Jesus, but to celebrate something completely different, something that we're going to do this morning when we partake in communion something that we do in remembrance, in memory of, and as a memorial to what? I like to describe it as God's radical love for us. In Romans 5, 8, it says God, King James Version, God commendeth which the other translations say demonstrated his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. While we were still in our mess, still lost in our sin, God loved us so much 
that he gave his one and only son for us. We were so loved by God that he gave Jesus to rescue, to redeem, to ransom us. Jesus paid the price, sacrificed his life, paid the penalty of death for you. Why? Because to him, you were worth it. Amen. Amen. So when we worship this morning, when we celebrate communion, think of God's incredible love for you. Dear Jesus, we thank you, we praise you, we glorify you, because today we can come and be here in your presence we can come remembering your radical, incredible, indescribable love that you had for each one of us. And we pray that as we worship, as we partake in communion, that we would remember that love and what you took us from and what you brought us to and what you're going to take us to, which is to be in your presence in glory. And we praise you for it. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. Come on, let's stand together. Let's worship the Lord this morning. But just begin with this wonderful hymn. Amen. Joy to the world. Amen. Joy to the world. The Lord is come. Let us been waiting 11 months, two weeks, three weeks to sing that song. <laughs> I know it's my wife's favorite song, her favorite hymn. Anyway, uh, God is good. Amen. Can just turn to somebody and say, God is good. Amen. Welcome. We're so glad that you're here today with us. Amen.
thank you, Lord. Who am I that you are mindful of me? That you would hear me when I call. Is it true that you are thinking of me? Yes, he is. How you love me. Come on, lift your voice and sing it out. It's amazing. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. You call me friend. Come on, who am I? It's amazing. It's amazing. Come on, sing it again. It's amazing. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. Come on, I'm a friend of God. Sing out. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. Amen. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. Come on, one more time. I am a friend of God. you so glad that you're his friend today that he loves you and hallelujah you know he's just not my friend but he's he's my best friend amen hallelujah you know one who one who sticks closer than a brother amen the one who you know puts up with all of our stuff <laughs> and yet and yet still loves us amen isn't that awesome just to know that you know and he's just, he's a good god amen he's good and so glad that you're here today and Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord, we just, we just praise your name, God. You're so good to us, Lord God. Thank you for your goodness, graces, God. Bless your name, Lord. Lord, we just praise you, God. This is my prayer for each and every one of us today, that he would just open up your eyes. You know... Your heart has eyes, it really does, that your heart can sense and feel and discern and just pray that, that your eyes of your, your heart would be open, not just our minds. You know, if we try to figure things out just rationally, intellectually, and, you know, it just, 
sometimes we just have to reach into our heart and feel what's inside there and let God just tug on that heart string this morning and hallelujah open the eyes of my heart Lord open the eyes of my heart I want to see Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. You know what's going to happen? To see you high and lifted up. You're shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and Open the eyes, open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open them up, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. Yes, Lord, I want to see you, to see you high and lifted up, oh, you're shining in the light of your glory, pour out your power and love as we sing, holy, holy, oh, you are high and lifted up, you're shining your power and love as we sing holy holy come on sing your holy 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 I want to see you you are holy just lift your hands to the Lord if you would I know that maybe maybe that you don't feel comfortable doing that but just lift your hands to the Lord and just ask him Lord will you pour out your power will you pour out your love upon me Lord today hallelujah God thank you Lord for your love hallelujah to see you high and lifted up Shining in the light of your glory, pour out your power and love as we sing, holy, 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 high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory, yes you are God, pour out your power and love as we sing, Holy, 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 holy,
our voices. How great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. And all will see how great, how great, how great. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art! How great Thou art! Then sings.
Sing it out. How great thou art. How great thou Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless your name today, Lord. You're the up a shout of praise to the King of Kings. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Man, I think I wore out my fingers on that one there. I didn't know what I was playing there for a while, but amen. God is good. Get this turn to somebody and just say, God is good. Amen. Amen. Greg, Greg, would, Greg, would you come up and lead us in communion, please? Hallelujah. You know, this is, as Falco began this service this, this morning, you know, he talked about that today is also the day that we, we, we share in, in the Lord's Supper, you know, as we remember uh, what, what the Lord has done for each and every one of us. Amen. Hallelujah. If you don't have, uh, if you don't have the little uh, uh, kit, you can just raise your hand and... Um, if you don't have one, raise your hand up high. We want like to have everyone serve. Uh, can you? Thank you, Jesse. You can just look around and see the hands that are lifted up. And I don't know if everybody have one up here. I don't. I don't have. If, if so, Ella and and then if you can come on up here. I forgot to get mine. And there's maybe one more back there. But we'll make sure everyone. We want to make sure everyone is served. I think there's some others that need it this morning too. Okay. Everybody good? Everybody good. All right, praise God. Well, we should have been a little bit more organized about that, but this is not a performance, amen. You know, we're just the people of God who just love him and <coughs> just want to share in his time. So, Greg, please. You know, as Falco was speaking this morning that we're coming into a plight time of joy and a time of grace, you know, we also celebrate the death mm. of our Lord and our Savior. And it wasn't for the death of of Christ, we wouldn't be sitting here today. Amen. Thank you know, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believed in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And that should be the call of our hearts. Mm -hmm. Because as Christ came forward and he died on that cross, and during that supper, that last supper, he took that bread, you see. Mm -hmm. He took it, mm -hmm. and he said, this is my body. Yes. This is a body that is going to be broken. Mm -hmm. He already knew what was to come. He already knew what he had to go through mm -hmm. on that cross. 
And he said, people, do this when you remember me. So take and eat. You know, on that same night, Jesus took the cup. He looked at his disciples. Hallelujah. He's looking at you. You are one of his disciples today. And he's saying, look, this is my blood. This is my blood of the everlasting covenant. I will shed my blood for the remission of your sins. Thank you. So that you can be forgiven, I will put myself upon that cross. I will shed my blood so that you, Thank you Lord. your families, your children, your children's children mm -hmm. can be forgiven if they receive me. So Jesus said, take and drink. Drink all of it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father God, we just want to thank you for sending your son. What a time that must have been. But Father God, we stand here before you to proclaim that day. Lord, we thank you for sending your son. Yes, Jesus, we thank you for going to that cross. Jesus Christ, we thank you for what you did upon that cross. But most of all, Jesus, we thank you for ra being raised again because it is through that that we can proclaim that you are God. Yes, Lord. So, Lord, we want to thank you for our salvation. And, Lord, let us be a testimony of your great love, your great mercy. Let us have hearts that are willing to praise you and worship you and glorify you for what you did upon that cross. And Lord, we want to thank you for that in Jesus' precious name we pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You know, when he said it is finished, the veil between the holy and the holy place was rent in two. Thank you, Lord. Can we just stand just for a couple more moments? I know we've been standing for a while, but just we're just going to sing the second verse of this song. His body, the bread, his blood, the wine, broken and poured out, all for love. The whole earth trembled, and the veil was torn. So
Before you sit down, come on, just give an elbow, fist bump, <laughs> something, <laughs> head shake, <laughs> head bump. <laughs> well, you might want to avoid that one there. Amen. <laughs> you can be seated. Praise God. Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made, and we are rejoicing and glad in it. It's a beautiful day. Even with the dreariness and the midst, mist that was fallen when I came in, it was, it's a beautiful day. And so um, just I hope you all have an, got a bulletin because there's a lot of things, um, you know, going on. And especially in the back. And I was, I was looking at this uh, either yesterday or this morning. Um, you know, just all the different activities and things, the times that we're not having church and times that we are having special services. So please mark your calendar so that you know, um, you know, because we, you know, this is, Jesus is the reason for the season. And we want to come together and really celebrate um, his birth. And just as Falco shared, that was such an uh, amazing remembrance of what Christmas is all about. Well, we're really excited because next Sunday is our um, time. We're coming together for our BGMC challenge. And so this was, um, I don't remember when we rolled it out, a couple weeks ago, but um, we have a few things here that we're trying to, um, you know, give money for, to be honest, okay? And you guys have the money, all right? So we have boxes in all the windowsills, boxes everywhere on, in the, over, or the um, meet and greet area. And you know, it's where you can put your change. And to be honest, you can put dollars, you can put checks, you can put hundreds, you can put thousands. Um, but we want to, you know, to support these projects through BGMC. And then also, we want to be able to give to our um, group at El Club. Um, in Guatemala that we minister to when we go down there for our mission trips. And so, again, you know, we want to be generous. You know, Pastor preached the last couple of weeks about being generous. And, you know, just how, you know, you are blessed, but those, obviously, those programs are blessed too. So we want to be obedient and do what God has called us to do. Every one of us, it's different. And so just be obedient. Um, in the back, in the foyer, I'm sure you saw the big green Christmas card box. So it's ready for you to send your Christmas greetings. You know, hey, it saves you, is it still 50 cents? I don't even know. I don't mail anything. It, 55, oh, geez, 55. Sorry, Jesse, you keep going up, all right? <laughs> um, but again, you know, if your name is missing from the, the list, is the list still back on the, in the overflow or the, I keep saying overflow, the meet and greet area, um, you know, we're sorry. You know, it wasn't intentional. It was kind of, uh, you know, put together a little quickly. So, um, you know, you could always tell Pat, she could put it in. Well, I guess we don't have a bulletin. Well, next week. Oh, okay. So is it updated? Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. So maybe you might want to pick up a new list, okay? It was updated from like last week. All right, and so again, it's nice to be able to, you know, share greetings with each other. Um, off offerings, ties and offerings are up here to the, my right. There will be no service on Wednesday, December 23rd. 
Um, you know, we have adult Bible study and girls ministries and Royal Rangers. So we're not going to be having that we're, because we're having a Christmas Eve service on the 24th at six o'clock. So mark, mark your calendar. We always have a, a wonderful time. It's just good to concentrate on the reason for the season. So, all right. Gosh, you're all so quiet. We got quiet all of a sudden. Huh? Poinsettias. Do you see these beautiful poinsettias up here? I know I got one last week. I got another one too. And so we are we are selling these poinsettias. We 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 buy them for six fifty. We sell them for eight. We're not making a bunch of money on them, but all the proceeds, all the money that we are making off of these are going towards missions. Okay, it's going towards some of our projects that that we would like to support. So after the service, if you would like to take one. That would be great. Ella will be happy. Ella, raise your hand so everybody knows who you are. She's up here. And so you'll recognize her by the back of her head, and you'll have to do by the front of her head, okay? <laughs> All right, so, so, you know, we'll be taking care of, uh, she'll, she'll be taking care of you. And we will have more next week, too. And so if you didn't happen to bring any money, okay? All right, so God is good, amen? amen. Praise God. So good to see each and every one of you. This morning, and um, you know, like Falco mentioned too, with that history lesson, I, you know, I'm in a mood for watching Charles Dickens now. All of a sudden, you know, I wasn't in a mood before that. You know, it's like you just plant that thought. You know, how many of us are going to go home and watch? <laughs> Maybe not. But anyway, God is good, Amen. And so it's just it's just great seeing each and every one of you here this morning. So glad for some of our guests here. Welcome. We're so glad that you're with us, and we certainly always. Or really delighted to have those who come in who check out uh, on, on, on Facebook, too. So, Amen. God is good. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. You know, Christmas is an interesting time of the year. Uh, it can take on many different flavors. But for the believer, for the true follower of Jesus Christ, it is a time of celebration. It's a time that we come together to celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And the, sem- the, the central purpose of his coming is, is what? Is to rescue mankind. That's really what that last song talked about. You know, that he came and he rescued, he redeemed us. He paid, he paid the price. We're not Jew, Gentile, male or female, black, white, brown, red, Democrat, amazing, oh, I'm joking, joke. Democrat or Republican, okay, you know, you know, he came for all, amen, amen, he came for all, and you know, heaven's going to be a wonderful place, you know, because there's going to be every tribe, every nation, every tongue, you know, we're going to probably get to meet people that we would never meet on earth, but we'll meet them in heaven. It's going to be glorious. Amen. And so the gospel is for everyone. In Matthew 121, it says, and she shall bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. Amen. What a name. For he will save his people from their sins. But you know, sadly, and even, and even in some cases, even Christians, uh, you know, we you know, we lose the this, this sense of the true meaning of Christmas. And oftentimes some of the myths and, tr- and of traditions kind of seem to take over. And, you know, there are some value to some of, the, uh, tr- you know, some of those things that we do that, that, that we that have kind of attached itself to, to Christmas. And, you know, uh, I like presents. Anybody like presents? I like presents, but I'm finding that the older I get, the more I like to give presents, and uh, I love having a tree in my house, and love when we are able to gather as family. Isn't that great? I mean, I think that's one of the biggest, huge blessings is um, sometimes watching your favorite, watching your favorite movie. I suppose yours is, you said what yours was this morning, Falco. I'm sadly to say that Mine is a different version of Charles Dickinson. It is Scrooged, okay? But anyway, uh, <laughs> all right. N- n- well, anyway. But, um, and, 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 and who likes the cookies, right? We all like the cookies, right? 
You know, my daughter, Rebecca, boy, she makes some mean cookies. I'm telling you. She, she makes the best chocolate chip cookies I've, I've ever eaten anywhere. So I challenge you to bring me your best chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> you, you caught on to that, didn't you? Some of you fell right into that, okay? <laughs> you know, and so, so there is some value to, to these uh, traditions, these, these things that we do at, at Christmas time. But many times, you know, many of these things we lay on top of the celebration of the birth of our Savior, which is no doubt is the most profound event that has ever happened in human history. And I challenge you that, that you read the Christmas story. You know, you know, why don't you maybe, you know, you know, go back and forth between Matthew and Luke. Maybe one day read, you know, read Matthew's account of it, and then the next day read Luke's. And then go back and do it again until, until Christmas is over. I just want to challenge you that. Now, before some of you might think that I'm some sort of Grinch, I am not. Okay? I'm not here to kill Christmas or anything like that or some of the things that we enjoy to do because I enjoy some of those things. But, you know, we can, we can do a lot of things at Christmas, and I just hope that you don't miss really what the true meaning of Christmas is. That you really don't really, that you miss Christmas. Because if you miss Jesus Christ in Christmas, you've missed it. Amen. I mean, can I just say that? If you missed, if Jesus Christ isn't the central part, the central being, the reason of your Christmas, then, uh, then I would hope that maybe what I'm, I'm going to share with you this morning will, will kind of maybe bring you back to that. Um, and so, you know, um, in John 18, verse 37, Jesus is standing before Pilate. Now, we know this is the, on the eve of he's going to be crucified. He's going to be condemned to die on a cross. And Jesus himself, and it's a very peculiar place that he would reference his birth, <laughs> okay? But he referenced his birth as he's standing before Pilate. And he says this here in verse 37 and verse 38. And Pilate said to him, who was the Roman leader at that time, Are you a king then? Jesus answered, You say rightly that I am a king. Now notice the next few words. For this cause... Or for this reason, and he's talking about the cross, coming to the cross, I was born. And for this cause, I came into the world, that I should bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. And that's a very, very important, very, very important sentence right there. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. And then Pilate Certainly, he wasn't interested in any truth that Jesus would, would bring. The only truth that he was concerned with was the truth that came out of Caesar's mouth. And then he says to him, what is truth? <laughs> what is truth? You know, the, the world today is really confused about truth. Not only uh, about perhaps the true meaning of Christmas, but many things, I mean, particularly things about God. And so I want to talk a little bit about this phrase here, what is truth, you know, and not so much maybe the truth surrounded around Christmas, but, um, but the truths that perhaps that are being pressed upon us by the world that we live in, okay? We, we live in a, a world, let's just face it, that is, that, you know, no, well, I'm not going to give you give it away. You're just going to have to hang loose, Okay. So it's, it's my belief that our society, it really is that, that, it is, that it has engulfed itself into a group of lies that do a tremendous amount of damage. And, and it has eternal consequences. And I want to share a few of those things with you this morning. And, um, you know, after all, you know, the, the, the church, the Bible says that says that it's the pillar and the ground of what? Of the truth. And so when you come here, you know, you're going to hear truth, okay? Now, sometimes truth, have you ever, you know, have you ever asked somebody, 
you know, how, you know, something about yourself, <laughs> and 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 they tell you the truth, and you didn't like it. Okay, well, I hope that you like the truth here this morning. You know, over the last fifty years, actually, probably even goes further than that. But over the last fifty years, scholars and theologians and people who are a lot smarter than I am, you know, they have uh, that have recognized that there are pervasive lies that have literally, that are literally dominating the thinking of people, okay? And it is infiltrating itself into the church, and actually much of the church today, sadly, has taken on some of these, some, some of these lies. So I'm just going to list a few, and I want to just talk about them. And, and uh, I'm just going to give a few because there's like 12, but so I'm just going to give you five, okay? I'm going to give you my, my top five. And these are, these are truths that are really being pressed upon us that are really not truths, okay? And so number one is this here. Nobody is in charge. Nobody is in charge. In other words... In other words, there is no God. It's just the outright, den outright denial of God that life is random. You know, we just, we, just, we just happen to be here, that there's no divine purpose. There's no really reason for our existence. There's no destiny. There's no really plan for your life. It just kind of happenstance, okay? In essence, what this speaks about, it speaks about really man has become its own God. And, of course, you can go to the bookstore today and you can find racks and racks of books that speak about that. Man becoming God. That there's no God, but, but if there is a God, and some would say, well, you know, if there is a God, but, you know, he's, you know, he's way out there in outer space and, and he's really not really connected to us personally. And so nobody is in charge. Life is just random. You know, if we just happen to show up and we just kind of do the best that we do. The second thing is truth is relative. And, and you know, since, since there's nobody in charge, there's no supreme being, there's no judge that we're going to have to stand before one day, no one to answer to, that truth is really what you want it to be. Okay. You have yours, I have mine. You know, there's no absolute truth. That, that would infer that there's a supreme being or a God in charge of things. And, of course, when it comes to the Bible, well, you know, it's just full of inspirational stories. Has anybody ever heard those things before? It's just full of inspirational stories. Many of the main, main denominational churches that existed for hundreds and hundreds of years today deny the inspiration the, of the Holy Scriptures, that they are infallible, inerrant, that they just contain stories and they, you know, they can have benefit, but there really isn't any, any uh, true, true guidance for, for your life. After all, the Bible is kind of out of date. And it really doesn't kind of fit into our culture today. And so we got to take out what we don't like and we put in what we do like. You know, the third myth or the third things that we're being told, is, and this, this kind of basically kind of follows one and two, that man is basically good. Man is basically good, you know. We're basically good, and if we're suddenly bad, it's because of circumstances outside of us. It's the influences. It's because of the influences on the outside of us that someone did something to me, and therefore that's, you know, that's why I'm bad. Or maybe it's my parents' fault. I know I kind of really lived by this one here for a long time. I blamed everything on my father. It was my father's fault that I was bad. It was my father's fault that I was doing drugs. It was my father's fault that I was doing this and doing the other thing that that I'm basically, I'm just a victim. But, but basically, we're, we're all kind of, we're just good. Number four, that life really exists in what you possess. It's materialism. It's what you can get. The, the, the game is that whoever has the most toys win. <laughs> right? You know, whoever has the most toys, accomplishments, trophies, fame, successes, achievements, and so forth. 
And that's really what life is. You know, life is really caught up in that. And it's, it's kind of joined with this twin sister, personal satisfaction is the highest pursuit, your happiness. Let me give you one more. And those, those are pretty, you know, let me just, you know, death is just a pleasant transition. Don't worry about death. It's a pleasant transition. It's like going, in, going into the light at the end of the tunnel. Therefore, again, you can go to bookstores and find books about those who have had these experiences of dying and, and seeing things and then coming back to life and telling us it's hogwash, okay? <laughs> Let me just tell you that. You know, or another popular thing is, you know, what we just cease to exist. You know, we just sleep eternally in peace. And, of course, there are those who, be, who maybe don't believe in God, but, but just in case if he does exist... They have a hard time in imagining that he would send in anyone to hell. And these are just some of the lies in our culture, and these are things that are pressing upon us today, and I'm here to tell you that they are far from the truth. That first of all, life is not random. There is someone in charge, and that someone is God. There is a God. He is the creator he is the eternal righteous judge. He is in absolute control of everything that happens in this world. And it all happens within the framework of his will and by his power and for his glory. Okay. In Revelations 4.1, can you just pull that up? So I can read it off the screen. Revelation, oh, you have it up already. It says, you are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things. And by your will, they exist and were created. In Psalms 139, it says, and I hope you believe this, that, that the Bible says that you were fearfully and wonderfully yeah. Made life is not random, my friend. Yeah. Life isn't random. God has a God has a design for your life. God has a purpose for you. He has a. I believe that he has a, you know, a strategic purpose and plan for for your life that is separate than any other. That truth is absolute. And the only, and the only truth re reality for you and I is the truth that is revealed in these scriptures. We hold on to the scriptures. Amen? Do we not? We better hold on to them because that's all we have is the Bible. Truth does not reside in man. It is not inside of you. It is you know, it is external. It is outside of you and me. Morality is absolute as it is described in the Bible. It is not changed. Creation is absolute as it is described in the Bible. Relationships, and this is a huge topic today. <laughs> Relationships are absolute as they are what? Described in the Bible. Truth is absolute. God's word in John 17, verse 17, it says, notice that just those last four words, your word is truth. Truth is absolute, my friend. And one day we will all stand before the giver of truth and give an account. Number three, man is basically what? Man is basically sinful. <laughs> That's, that really defines who we really are. Man is basically sinful. In Ephesians 2, 1, it says, For you were made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins. In Romans 3, 23, it says what? For all have sinned. All. We all have sinned, amen? Yeah. You know, the only difference between, you know, saints and sinners is that we are saved 
sinners. Amen. <laughs> you know, we have, you know, but our past has been what? Forgiven. And we have a, a hope in the future. You know, we were born alienated from God. We were born with a sinful nature. We were lost in our sin until what? We were born again. You see, that's the truth. The most important thing in life is not what you possess. It's not personal satisfaction. But let me just tell you, the most important thing that you have in life is what you believe. Because what you believe becomes an anchor to your soul. It's what you believe. As described to us in the word of God. And death is not, death is not a welcome, you know, it is not a welcome, delightful transition. It is a, to, to some, now for us who are believers, it is glorious, amen, but for some it is a horrible, horrible sending into eternal judgment. These are the things that we are hearing over and over and over again. These are the things that are being propagated to us a hundred, probably a hundred thousand different ways and over the last 50 to 75 years. You know, I just wonder sometimes, you know, you know, it seems like we're, we're just, everything is speeding up right now, okay? And I just wonder if the Lord tarries another 50 years, where will we be in America? When you go back to just a little over, what, 200 years ago, 250 years ago, and you see you see the things that we believed in, that life wasn't random. They, be they believed that when they left England and came over to a planet, they believed that they were on a divine task. It wasn't random. They believed that there was the reality of there is absolute truth that God is sovereign and God is Lord. That life isn't about just personal pleasure and satisfaction and how much you can achieve and how much you can have and how many trophies you have in your bookcase. And that life is much more than that. You know, we live in a world where these lies are no longer propagated kind of like behind the scenes. Matter of fact, these lines are right out in front of us. And the world is proud to mention and to speak about them and you know, they just don't slip them here and there. You know, they're, they are the norm. They're preached in our schools. You know, we have young people who are in, in school, and this is what they're hearing. Are they hearing that th that truth is truth is absolute? That is that is derivative from the Word of God? No. It's preached in our colleges and our universities. But I'm here to tell you the truth this morning. Two times already that Falco and, and Greg, you mentioned the verse that I really want to close on this morning. It says this in John 3.16. For God so loved the world. And you know, that's very important to know. Because God is absolutely holy who is in charge of everything. The God who gave us his word, the truth, the God who knows that I'm sinful, the God who compels me to believe. So that death is a glorious transition into heaven. Can I just... Just repeat what I just said. Can you just hear what I just said? Because this is, for God so loved the world, and that's very important to know that, that, that the God who is absolutely holy, he is in charge of everything. You're here because he wanted you here. He purposed you would be here. As a matter of fact, can I go on and say, can I just take that even further? I believe that he would purpose that you would be in this room right now hearing what you're hearing. Yeah. 
and that he is in charge of everything. I don't know about you, but before coming, coming, to, coming to know Christ as my Lord and Savior, that offended me. <laughs> I got over that quickly. <laughs> I realized, man, he's, my life has been so much better with him, that he is in charge of everything, the God who gave us his word, the truth, the God who knows that I am sinful, and the God who compels me to believe. So that what? Death is a glorious transition into heaven. That God loves you. He loves every single person in this room. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. See, that's... That's the good news of Christmas, amen? That's what Christmas, you know, that's why Christmas is such an incredible event. Do, do those things. Let's enjoy our family. Let's enjoy the celebrations, but make Jesus the top of it. Because let me tell you, the world, are, the world around us is removing Jesus from it. Matter of fact, there's some places where you can go. You, you know, if you say Merry Christmas, they'll, they'll correct you and say, no, it's Happy Holidays. See, that's the good news. That, that, that's why it's, it's such an incredible thing. Let us not deflect our thoughts. Let's keep Christ right there. And the, and the pro profound reality of the coming of our Savior. Think about that. And next week we're going to talk a little bit more about this, about that whole story. I mean, it is an incredible, you know, but it's not a story. It's the truth of God's word. That God so loved the world that he sent his son, born of a virgin, born in a stable, born in a feeding trough. Can you imagine that? And the message of Christmas is the message of hope. It's the message of forgiveness. It's the message of salvation. It's the message of redemption. It's the message of God's love. And, and so don't, don't lose sight of that with all the other stuff that goes around it. Don't let anything get on top of that. Amen. Keep everything down here, but keep Jesus up here. Because he is tops. Amen. And I trust that the Lord will open your heart, that you will embrace, embrace this, embrace what Christmas is. And I know that we have some young people in our church and, you know, enjoy, enjoy that. But know that Jesus, <laughs> he came for you. He came for you. Mm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Can you just stand with me, please? Can we just bow our heads and just, just close our eyes for a second? I want just to ask you that. I just want to ask you this question this morning. Do you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior? And if you don't know him as your Lord and Savior... You can do that right now. Those that are watching on Facebook, those who are watching online, and just perhaps something that you heard this morning that my life isn't random. My life wasn't an accident. That there's a divine creator who knew, who knew me before I was born. A divine creator who purposed purpose before the foundations of the world that I would be alive, that I would be living today, and that he has a plan for my life. You know, we have, we have our plans, don't we? We got plans. We want to do this. We want to do that. And there's nothing wrong with those plans. But you know that God's plan for your life really begins when you come to know him as your Savior. Do you know him as your Savior this morning? And so I want to just lead you in a prayer. 
You got to pray. It's not the prayer, but it's got to be in your heart. That you want to you want to know that yeah, my life wasn't just random. Or the lies that I believe that just truth is relative. I just come up with my own rules. I used to say too, with the buddies I used to party with, oh man, you know, if there is a hell, boy, we're just going to party in hell. No, that's not the truth. That's a lie. Do you know that's another one of the lies? But God sends no one to hell. It's our rejection of him that does it. And so I'm going to ask you that if you would just, just pray after me. Hallelujah. Say, Jesus is going to be at the top of my Christmas this year because he's my Lord and Savior. Amen. Come on, pray. Pray with me. Dear Jesus, oh, I thank you for coming for me. You came into this lost world to seek and to save. And you are seeking after me this morning. I feel the pull in my heart to believe. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God, thank you for loving me so much. I ask you, Lord Jesus, to come into my heart to be my Savior, to be my Lord. I give you my life every day forward, and I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Can we just give him praise this morning? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Can you just... Can you just sing this with me this morning? And we don't need any music, just our voice. Just sing it and just lift your hand to the Lord. How great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. God, one more time, how great is our God, sing with me, how great is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. You know, I want you, I'm going to have Al come up and just close this in prayer. But if you prayed that prayer, would you, would you come see me? Would you, I'll just be standing over here for a little bit. If you prayed that prayer, I just want to pray with you and, and just, just say to you, I'm just really proud of you. And, you know, you know, it takes courage. It takes really faith. But God's, I believe that God touched your heart so that you would believe and that you would pray that prayer this morning. And so would you just come? I'll be standing over there. Just come and say, hey, Pastor, I prayed that prayer with, you know, I prayed that prayer this morning. I, I, I'm a Christian this morning. And so I just would just like just to share a few things with you. Amen. 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 Just something that God reminded me as we were in the war room this morning that there was prophecies in the Old Testament for years and years and years of what was going to happen at Jesus' birth death and resurrection and some of us have received prophecies that may not have come to pass yet but we need to hold on to them because sometimes there, there's a, for a specific time in our lives so father as we go today just pray that you would protect us keep us safe send a healing word to those that need a healing touch this morning uh, keep us in remembrance of this season why you were here why, why you left and why you're coming back. And as we go, just we want to go and bless somebody. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.